is Andrew Corbin. I uh, work for The Guardian newspaper. I'm a film critic and writer. And this, uh, as you probably know, is Pavel Pavlikovsky. <laughs> just going to do a short Q&A um, and then we'll take some questions afterwards. I think we've got an hour or an hour and a half or something like that. So um, I've, just got various, <laughs> I've just got various convoluted questions to start off with and the idea is obviously to get Pavel to talk as much as possible and very little from me. Um, and when we turn it over to questions, I think there's somebody with a microphone at the back who will um, be passing around. Um, so um, I think, as, as I'm aware, we weren't actually in here before, but the films that were just on were Serbian epics and Tripping with Jurinovsky, so I um, just want to ask you a couple of things coming from there. The first one is a, it's quite a big um, concept question, really, which is um, to do with poetry, really. The, um, obviously, Serbian epics is about many things, um, most obviously the Bosnian War, but ostensibly it's also about poetry, which is something that probably gets a little overlooked um, because of the sort of content of the film. And um, I know poetry has been a sort of central um, feature of your creative life for a long time, going back to your PhD, I think, on Gail Trackle, as far as I remember you saying. I don't know shamefully little about him, unfortunately. Um, and quite a few of your films have been about poets. And also, crucially, you, um, whenever I've sort of talked to you or read about what you say about what you're trying to do as a filmmaker, it, you, you always come back to the, word, the phrase trying to create something poetic on screen. So I'd just like to talk about the phrase to yeah. say that but it's still comprehensible yeah. and it's still very rare that anybody <laughs> actually uses that phrase as a film. So I was just interested to know what your interest in poetry is and how it transfers to your screen work. Well, to be specific about Serbian epics, I'm not terribly interested in Karadzic's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was an interesting way into the film. And the oral epic poetry of the Serbs, I was interested in it, uh, not, not for its intrinsic value, but it, it seemed to me at the time to be like an interesting key to the whole question. Key is too much said, but an interesting framework to to, to put around the, 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 the question of what was happening in, in the Balkans, especially in the heads of the, of the Serbs. So I read the oral epics, the medieval oral epics, which centered mainly around the, the Battle of Kosovo, you know, the, the, the history of how they decided, chose the, the Serbs, the King Laudan, chose to lose the Battle of Kosovo in 1389. And I have discovered at the heart of the, the you know, the, the, the myth, the Serbian you know, foundation myth, uh, a, a certain death wish, a, a desire to, 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 to win gloriously, um, and, and it sort of somehow tied in with the, with, with what was happening in 1991, 92, when the war was started. Um, so, so anyway, I, I used it partly as a kind of starting point to explore the Serbian or epic poetry, um, explore the, the idea of nationhood. I mean, to, to put it in a nutshell, you know, the Serbs didn't have a statehood for 600 years almost, and they recreated the, the identity and the, the, lang the language uh, on the basis of, of, of oral epic poems, which were collected by a romantic peasant poet, Vuk Karadzic, nothing to do with who collected them and, and, and wrote them down, and that became, um, that became like a foundation stone of, of the rediscovered identity. So they're, so they're very important, these oral epic poems. Um, then I discovered also that Karadzic came from a family of oral epic poets. So his father was one, and his brother was one, uh, and, and it obviously meant, it meant a lot. Um, and then I also, at some point, it became clear that it was a fantastic Trojan horse. You know, you go to the war zone, you know, where it's full of media chaos and, and nobody trusts anybody, and you come as a kind of some kind of idiot who, like, fly, catching butterflies, uh, and you're just interested in oral epic poetry. Um, so it, it did, in a weird way, help me to actually get to the, kind of, you know, to the central command, you know, to the heart of darkness of the war, because the Serbs, uh, are people who, who I came across at some point, uh, who all, by the way, were failed poets um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, failed historians. Uh, they, they, and they, they thought, oh, this is a weird guy who just wants to make a film about, about our great culture, you know, about our medieval traditions. Uh, so that, you know, being interested in oral epic poetry actually got me first in touch with uh, you know, 
Professor Kolyevich, who was a member of the of the Serbian um, government, uh, and then and then when I got into the company of, of Karada Karadzic, she was really tickled that I was interested in uh, in our epic poetry. So it, it was like you know being poetic and vague. You know, was, I mean, the, the poetry was um, you know it was like an intellectual starting point and a, and a, a kind of strange excuse for the whole film. And also, it, it, it allowed me to make a film for Bookmark, BBC literary program. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I had no contact with the BBC apart from uh, Nigel Williams, who was the head of Bookmark. And I said to Nigel, like, oh, listen, I just want to make a film about Bosnia because I, I, I was obsessed with that place for, for even before the war. Uh, and, um, and I had a literary angle, you know, it's going to be something to do with poetry and, and oral epics. And by the way, Karadzic wrote some poet, poems. One of his poems, Sarajevo, you, you heard in the sites in, in the film, I seem to remember. So, so I, anyway, to cut a long story short, it wasn't really my interest in poetry that, that led me to make this film. But the way I made it, I didn't want it to be a film that's narrative in any way, or I didn't want it to be verite, you know, where you just look at something and just humbly observe what's going on. I wanted to make it out of a strong scenes and images, you know, just to like a mosaic of stuff. And, and the structure was going to be not narrative, but more musical, you know, so it, you know, you first show kind of, kind of really innocent stuff, but, but resonant and powerful. And then it's, and it gets madder and madder, you know, so I, I wanted the whole structure to be you know, poetic rather than uh, prosaic. Yeah, I mean, I was just wondering how you translated that to your fiction films. I mean, I remember you talking about My Summer of Love, in terms of poetry and either as well. Um, yeah. So I just wondered, to, I mean, you know, um, unless it was just a line you were spinning, was it? Um, I just wonder how it actually works on screen. Yeah, I, I use that word very loosely you know, to shut people up. You know, they just want to say poetry or, or, or religion. You know, they leave you alone. Uh, but, uh, no, but I was always interested in in, in, in films. Not always, but I kind of discovered that I'm, what really turns me on in films is is, is strong images and moments, uh, and um, the narrative less so, the narrative, you know, it's usually quite predictable. But if I can make films made out of strong moments and images and just put them side by side, and it somehow evokes something, and in the spaces between the scenes and between the cuts, something happens in people's imagination, then, then, uh, then that's, that's, for me, cinema. Serbian epics, you know, it's very uneven. There's some good bits and some no, less good bits, but the idea was that, you know, we just put stuff side by side. And the overall impact is not about the story, and it's not about the human interest or psychology of the characters, but it's a kind of mosaic that adds up in some way, and that has a musical rhythm rather than, rather than a narrative one. And um, of course, in, in my last film, Ida, I also tried, I mean, there's a story there, of course, but I also tried to make it out of like, strong chunks, you know, strong, strong moments, images, sounds, and, uh, and just to avoid, um, avoid <coughs> blinking too much or uh, explaining too much. Just, just hoping that, uh, you know, just putting these things together will evoke something in people's heads. So, uh, and that's why all my films are so bloody short, you know, you keep <laughs> distilling them. <laughs> Why is it so short? I mean, usually, I'm one of these few filmmakers that, in the in the cutting room, my my cut is usually sh shorter. My first assembly is shorter than my final film, you know, because I just go for the, the really kind of strong bits. And, and my editor of these films is sitting over there, Stefan. 